planet is the cradle of the mind, but no one will live in the cradle forever. Konstantin Kvolsky once said, For all human history, from the building of the Great Pyramids through World Wars during the early 20th century, everything you've ever known and ever loved has happened on this planet. Many people believe we should explore the stars, and some believe we cannot until we solve the problems of Earth first. But who is right? Well, there's only one way to find out. Konstantin Tsiolkovsky was a Russian Soviet rocket scientist who pioneered astronautics. He came to believe that colonizing space would lead to the perfection of the human species with immortality and a carefree existence. Additionally, Tsiolkovsky theorized many aspects of space travel and rocket propulsion. He is considered the father of space flight and the first person to conceive the space elevator being inspired by the Eiffel Tower in 1895. He was the first to determine that the escape velocity from the Earth into orbit was 8 km a second, as could be achieved by using a multi-stage rocket fueled by liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. During his lifetime, he published over 500 works on space travel and related subjects. Among his works are designed for his construction of space rockets and ideas for stable rocket engines, multi-stage boosters, space stations, airlocks exiting a spacecraft in the vacuum of space, and closed cycle biological systems provide food and oxygen for space colonies. This is a remarkable achievement by any standards, but particularly as many of these documents were written before the first airplane flight and by a man who had abandoned his formal education at the age of 10. Silvkowski died at the age of 78 in 1935. Robert Oberth was a German rocket scientist who is known as the German father of rocketry. Inspired by Jules Verne's book From the Earth to the Moon, Oberth designed the concept of the Rukola rocket at 14 years old, which would use expelled exhaust gas to propel itself. During World War I, he proposed the development of liquid fuel long range missiles to the German army in 1917, who immediately rejected the idea. He also studied the feasibility of multi stage rocket with sections that cast off as become unnecessary. After World War I, he attended the University of Heidelberg to study physics. In 1922, he submitted his dissertation on rocket design, it was rejected by the academic scholars, he decided to publish his theories in the pamphlet titled By Rocket into Planetary Space, which he later expanded to 429 pages. The work not only showed mathematically demonstrated the ability of a rocket's ability to leave Earth's orbit, but also explored that rockets could operate in a vacuum, where they could travel faster than their own exhaust. He also touched on the potential effects of space travel on the human body, and the possibility of launching satellites in orbit. During World War II, he helped develop the V-2 rocket with former student Werner von Braun. After World War II, he worked as a rocket consultant Switzerland, he then decided to develop solid propellant anti-aircraft rockets for the Italian Navy. He died on December 29, 1989 in Nuremberg, soon after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Robert Peltieri is one of the founding members of modern rocketry. He became interested in space travel in 1913, produced a paper that represented the rocket equation, and was able to calculate the energies to reach the moon and nearby planets. In this talk, he proposed the use of atomic energy to power an interplanetary vehicle. He then published a book in 1930 of his work. In 1934, he published a revised version that included details on interplanetary travel and the application of nuclear power. Peltieri began experimenting with different types of rocket propulsion systems, including liquid propellants. The same year, he ran a demonstration of rocket energy powered by gasoline and liquid oxygen. During an experiment with a rocket design using tetranitromethane, he lost four fingers from his right hand during an explosion. Robert H. Goddard was an American engineer, physicist, inventor, and professor. He is credited for developing the world's first liquid-fueled rocket, which he launched successfully on March 16, 1926. By 1915, his works had helped improve the efficiency of solid-fueled rocket, singularly aired the modern rocket innovation. He had been called the man who ushered in the space age. Two of Goddard's 214 patents were considered milestones, a multi-stage rocket, and a liquid-fueled rocket. Were important milestones for spaceflight, he had also developed two axes of controls, such as gyroscopes and steerable thrust, to allow rockets to control their flight effectively. He not only recognized the potential of rockets for atmospheric research, ballistic missiles, and space travel, but also the thirst to scientifically study, design, and construct, and fly the precursor rockets need to eventually implement his ideas. His 1919 monograph, A Method of Reaching Extreme Altitudes, is considered one of the classic texts of the 20th century rocket scientist. He passed away in 1945. Werner von Braun is a controversial figure in space history. In 1920, von Braun witnessed the demonstration of an Opel Rack rocket car, which ignited his enthusiasm. In 1930, von Braun attended the Technical University of Berlin, where he joined the Space Flight Society and tested his liquid field rocket motor tests. Von Braun was an opportunist who joined the Nazi party and applied for his membership in 1937 to continue his work on rockets in Nazi Germany. He helped develop the V-2 rockets at Pendamunda. Following the war, he was acquired by the U.S. during Operation Paperclip and worked for the U.S. Army of Berlin 
ballistic missile program. He developed the rockets that launched the U.S.'s first space satellite in 1958. He worked with Walt Disney on a series of films which popularized the idea of human space travel in the U.S. and beyond from 1955 to 1957. In 1960, he was assimilated to NASA, where he served as the director of the newly formed Marshall Space Flight Center and as the chief architect of the Saturn V rocket that took America to the moon. He is sometimes described as the father of space travel and the father of rocket scientists. Many people have criticized the U.S. for letting Von Braun escape justice due to his involvement in World War II. After World War II, the Cold War was brewing between the Soviet Union and the United States. The Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1 on October 4, 1957, marking the first artificial Earth satellite in history. This unprecedented launch was unanticipated by the US. This triggered the space race and ultimately culminated in the moon landings. They then launched the first animal into space, named Laika the Dog, on November 3, 1957. In 1958, the US established NASA in response to Sputnik, and the space race began. In 1961, Alan Shepard became the first American to enter space, performing a suborbital space Light. This occurred less than a month after the Soviet Union's Yuri Gargarian became the first human in space, executing a full orbital space flight. The United States and the Soviet Union were trying to gain the upper hand over each other until John F. Kennedy made the declaration that would change history. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. On September 12, 1962, President John F. Kennedy gave a speech to a crowd of over 40,000 people, stating that the United States was going to land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. NASA then started to develop the technology to reach the moon. Project Mercury was the first team in spaceflight program in the United States, running from 1958 through 1963. The goals of the Mercury program were to put a man in orbit, understand technical requirements and medical effects, and bring him back to life. The second manned spaceflight program was the Gemini missions. Project Gemini objective was the development of space travel techniques to support the Apollo mission to land astronauts on the moon. In doing so, it allowed the United States to overtake the Soviet Union in the space race. By demonstrating mission endurance up to 14 days, methods of extravehicular activity, and without tiring, an orbital maneuver is necessary to achieve rendezvous and docking with another spacecraft. This allowed Apollo to pursue its main goal without spending time developing these techniques. Unfortunately, during the program, three astronauts died in air crashes during training, including members of the prime crew for Gemini 9. A very important important program that was not well known occurred from the late 1950s to the late 1960s. The X-15 hypersonic research program was a joint project between NASA and the US Air Force, which was a program to investigate all aspects of piloted hypersonic flight. The information gained from the X-15 program contributed to the development of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo piloted spaceflight programs as well as the Space Shuttle program. The purposes of the program were as followed, which identified 25 specific accomplishments of the effort. These include discovery of hotspots by service irregularities, the discovery of the hyper Sonic boundary layer flow is turbulent and not laminar, the development of the first practical full pressure suit for pilot protection in space, the first use of reaction controls for altitude control in space, and many more objectives. The X-15 had two unofficial world records which include speed and altitude records. As the X-15 had reached 4,520 miles per hour on October 3rd, 1967 with pilot Pete Knight, and an altitude record of over 354,200 feet on August 22nd, 1963 with pilot Joseph Walker. The program was a success and ended in 19. 68 and the program helped the U.S. land on the moon. The most famous space program in history is the Apollo program, which started in 1961 and concluded in 1972. The main purpose of the mission was to accomplish the national goal of landing on the moon, which was set by President John F. Kennedy on May 25, 1961, which included a crewed lunar landing and return to Earth. The Apollo program had many challenges and setbacks, such as when Apollo 1 cabin had a cabin fire that killed the entire crew during a pre-launch test. The other major event that occurred during the program was Apollo 13. While en route to the moon, one when the oxygen tanks exploded which prevented their landing, the crew barely returned to Earth. Out of the six successful missions, five were able to land on the moon, and most notable was Apollo 11. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed their lunar module on the moon and walked on the lunar surface. This was the first man to walk on the moon, and it meant that the United States beat the Soviet Union in the space race. However, the Soviet Union had also developed its own manned lunar program. However, it was unsuccessful in being able to get cosmonauts to the moon. After the success of the Apollo missions, NASA began setting its sights on more missions to explore space and beyond. Beginning in 1964, the Skylab program was the first program to launch American space stations. Skylab was the only space station operated exclusively by the US. It was occupied for about 24 weeks between May 1973 and February 1974. 
three crews occupied Skylab and performed numerous scientific experiments. Skylab's orbit eventually decayed and it disintegrated into the atmosphere on July 11, 1975. The next major mission that NASA embarked on was the Space Shuttle Program. Beginning in 1972, it was the fourth human spaceflight program carried out by NASA and many accomplishments. Here are a few examples. The Space Lab missions, which include science, astronomy, crystal growth, and space physics, construction of the International Space Station, carrying the Hubble Space Telescope to low Earth orbit, carrying interplanetary missions to orbit, which include Megalin, Galileo, and Ulysses probes, crew rotation and servicing the Mir Space Station and ISS, and many more successes. The Space Shuttle program operated for 30 years. NASA built six space shuttles, which flew 135 missions. However, two of the six shuttles were destroyed. In 1986, the Challenger shuttle took off, and 76 seconds into the flight experienced a catastrophic failure. One of the O-ring seals and one of the solid rocket boosters failed to prevent pressurized burning gas from escaping. This caused the failure of the external tank and the orbiters break up due to the aerodynamic forces. The other incident was the Columbia disaster which occurred on February 1st, 2003. During the launch of the shuttle, the orbiter's left wing was damaged compromised the vehicle's thermal protection system. This caused a complete disintegration upon re-entry and unfortunately killed the seven crew members. This accident led to the Constellation program and ultimately the retirement of the space shuttle program in 2011. NASA also carried out many unmanned missions during the later part of the 20th century. Here are a few examples. Launched in 1973-1974, Pioneer 10 and 11 were the first spacecraft to explore the outer edge of the solar system. Pioneer 10 became the first spacecraft to leave the solar system, followed by Pioneer 11, both spacecraft carrying the Pioneer plaque. Voyager 1 and 2 are spacecraft that were launched in 1977. They were built to explore the outer ice giants Uranus and Neptune. After this was completed, they were sent on a trip out of the solar system, becoming two of the five spacecraft to enter interstellar space. Both spacecraft are carrying the Voyager Golden Record. Cassini-Huygens was a spacecraft launched by NASA in 1997. Its mission was to explore Saturn and its moons. The probe carried Huygens, the first spacecraft to land on the moon in the outer solar system. Cassini was repurposed in 2008 to fly through the plumes of Enceladus, which is 50 kilometers away from the surface. Cassini then executed its grand finale where the spacecraft passed through the gaps between Saturn and its rings. Cassini was then steered into Saturn to protect its moons from contamination. The Hubble Space Telescope is a space telescope launched to low Earth orbit in 1990. Hubble is one of the largest telescopes in space and a very important research tool on public relations boom for astronomy. It has taken many images of deep space and led to breakthroughs such as determining the rate of expansion of the universe. The Viking landers are a pair of American space probes, Viking 1 and Viking 2. The probes landed on Mars in 1976 and their main objective was to search for signs of life or past life on Mars. The pair of landers were accompanied by orbiters who also had their own scientific objectives. The orbiters took the famous photo of the face on Mars. In the 23rd century, many advancements and changes have happened to space exploration. Beginning in 2017, the Artemis program is intended to re-establish a human presence on the moon since the Apollo program. It takes two principal elements from the Canceled Constellation program, the Orion spacecraft and the Space Launch System. NASA is also planning a new space station called the Lunar Gateway, which will sit in lunar orbit as a holding area for rovers and other robots. It is also intended to have a communication hub, science laboratory, and habitation module. NASA also has historical mile markers for missions. Launched in 2006, the New Horizons spacecraft was built to be the first spacecraft to visit Pluto, which it did fly by in 2015 as a historic morning. After this, NASA set its sights on a Kuiper Belt object named Arakoff. New Horizons setting its sights and gathering unique data on the heliosphere. Being in development since 1996, the James Webb Space Telescope is the most powerful, most complex, and the largest telescope to be put into space. Its primary mission is to observe the oldest stars and galaxies just after the Big Bang and to make detailed observations of potentially habitable exoplanets atmospheres. The telescope is named after James E. Webb, who was the administrator of NASA during the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs. The largest and most capable rover ever sent to Mars, Curiosity was launched in 2011 and landed on Mars in 2012. Curiosity's main purpose is to answer the question of, did Mars ever have the right environmental conditions to support small life forms called microbes? Curiosity still continues to explore and send back data from a time when Mars could have had life. Conceived in 2012, the Mars 2020 rover is known as Perseverance. Perseverance is the second car-sized rover to be sent to Mars, and carried a passenger named Ingenuity. Perseverance is looking for possible past life on Mars and assessing its past habitability. Perseverance is collecting samples for a future mission, where these samples will hopefully be returned to Earth. It also is the first time people have heard what Mars sounded like, And had video of the landing. Perseverance's parachute had a secret message which when decoded said dare mighty things and had coordinates to JPL. 
The concept originates from 1958. The Parker Solar Probe is named after physicist Eugene Parker. It was launched in 2018 and has made many passes around the sun. The Parker Probe's main goal is to touch the sun, as its objective is to expand our knowledge of the origin and evolution of solar wind. It will also make critical contributions to forecasting changes in the space environment that affect life and technology on Earth. The Solar Probe was the first spacecraft to ever go into the sun's corona and the fastest object ever at over 690,000 kilometers an hour. Ingenuity became the first object in history to have a powered flight on another planet and has made 72 complete flights through its three-year operation. Unfortunately, Ingenuity was permanently grounded on January 18th, 2024, when a rotor blade broke off and other blade tips were damaged during the landing. A piece of fabric from the wing of the 1903 Wright Flyer airplane is attached under the solar panel of the helicopter. A new space race has been brewing, however it's different than the one that happened in the Cold War. The Cold War space race was all about getting up and out and establishing a presence in space. Now we are claiming what is there, and as more countries become spacefaring nations, history suggests that there will be competition and cooperation along the way. But what we have failed to establish so far is a set of universally agreed upon rules to regulate this competition. Without laws governing human activity in space, the stage is set for disagreements on an astronomical level. Three big nations still control space. These are the United States, Russia, and China are the clear frontrunners. However, the race is different as private companies are starting to open up space for everyone. This includes SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Relativity Space. The most notable company is SpaceX as the company has done many firsts such as the first privately funded fully liquid fueled rocket to reach orbit, the first private company to send humans into orbit, most orbital launch to the single rocket model without failure with the Falcon 9 and 120 successful launches as of 21st of April 2022, and the tallest most powerful rocket to ever launch to Starship's first test flight on 20th April 2023. Space is becoming ever more important from Starlink satellites sending Wi-Fi around the world to the DART mission where NASA was successful in redirecting an asteroids orbit, to space mining where asteroids could help the world with unlimited resources, to sending humans to Mars and setting up a second colony on another planet. They're opening up new technology and research such as manufacturing space, 3D printing organs, and much more. However, with all the benefits humanity and space could bring, many people believe that we should not explore space until we solve the problems on Earth first. But who is right? This debate has been going on since the start of the space exploration. However, I think it's important to look at both sides of the discussion and come to an understanding. Space exploration has brought many things to humanity such as the jaws of life which were derived from explosive charge to separate devices on the space shuttle, to foil blankets for when people are in extreme conditions, which were developed for protection for spacecraft and people in space. And other examples are freeze-dried foods, wireless headsets, LED lighting, memory foam, and modern CAT scanners and radiography. When looking at the negative space exploration, many like to point out that we are spending billions of dollars a year on rockets when the money could be used to help solve problems on Earth such as climate change, humanitarian crises, pandemics, disasters, political issues, and so much more. They believe we shouldn't go to space and instead focus on the issues we have. Some even believe that space exploration should not even be done as nothing has come from it. However, this question was asked and answered back in 1970. Shortly after the first Apollo mission, a nun working in Zambia, Africa, named Sister Mary Jukunda, she sent a letter to NASA asking how they could justify spending billions of dollars on the Apollo program when children were starving to death. The letter somehow made it onto the desk of one of the top rocket scientists at NASA, and suddenly it was the scientist brought to the US as part of Operation Paperclip at the conclusion of World War II. He was serving as the Associate Director of Science at NASA. It must have been painful for someone being accused of inhumanity, as Stuenlinger was often accused of being a Nazi for his role in the German rocket program. Stuenlinger responded with a very informative letter, however, I have summarized it for you. Stuenlinger's letter addresses the question of why billions of dollars being allocated to space exploration and pressing humanitarian needs on Earth, such as hunger and poverty. He argues that while these earthly problems are indeed urgent, space exploration contributes to their solution in several significant ways. Firstly, the technological advancements driven by space exploration lead to valuable spin-offs that benefit society across various sectors, including medicine, agriculture, and communication. Secondly, the space exploration promotes international cooperation and collaboration, fostering unity and understanding among nations that can facilitate efforts to address global challenges. Thirdly, the scientific knowledge gained from space research provides insights and innovation that can be applied to improve conditions in Earth, particularly in areas like food production and environmental monitoring. While he acknowledges the importance of addressing humanitarian needs directly, the letter suggests that space exploration complements the efforts and long-term solutions to complex problems. He encourages a balanced approach that recognizes the value of both space exploration and humanitarian aid in advancing humanity towards a better future. Sister Mary Jukunda, after receiving his letter and photo, simply wrote back, Thank you. From now on, I firmly believe in the profound value of the space program. The point of his letter was to make her open to considering the value of things that don't directly and immediately affect us, and to consider the benefit of all man in total when we consider what is right and what is wrong. Maybe all be open to considering this view. 
Mankind is intertwined with the stars. Our future depends on what direction we go, whether we travel beyond the Earth and explore planets, or we stay on Earth and solve the problems without ever leaving our home planet. I believe it's important for our process future that humans expand to the stars and explore the universe. We cannot stay on this planet forever. We must become a space-sharing species. There's a common saying during the Apollo mission that went like this. If we can go to the moon, we can, showing that we can do amazing things when we work together, and if a challenge comes up, we face it together. But whether or not this happens, it's up to all of us. I want to leave you a speech by Carl Sagan. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species can migrate. Is it? Yes. Settled? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. And as always, stay open and stay curious. Thanks for watching.